I, I I really liked that he kept saying, like, I don't know what to expect from the Rams defense. And, and yeah, that that's not really an answer, but it, it's true. And and this is and, and it sort of reminded me of why I feel like people are overlooking the Aaron Donald thing, because if you think about it, they are best set up to succeed in the defensive front, which is weird because you're missing the all time greatest yes. humans to tackle. Because you have Kobe Turner, you have Byron Young, you drafted Jerry Burns, you drafted Brandon Fisk, and, and it felt like okay, well, they seem good. But then you're you're focusing on the uh, inside linebacker. Like if you lose Ernest Jones, you're you're pretty much screwed there at the position because you don't have any depth there, anybody else to stand out. The secondary has a little more names there because you brought in Tre'Davious White, you brought in Darius Williams, you brought in Cam Curl. Adam mentioned there's a an abundance of safeties there, so you could probably get by with that. But cornerback could be one of their weak points if those guys aren't healthy and ready to go. And like, it's for Davis White. If he is healthy, is he still that same guy from Buffalo? That's tough to do to turn back the clock in the NFL. Same thing with Darius Williams. When you bring back an old player, like you're going back to an ex, it never really works out. So, that, you know, if there's somebody that steps up there uh, you know, to be uh, a young player that does well, I don't know. But at least at safety, they seem much better with depth. So safety, defensive front is okay. But linebacker, inside linebacker, that is. Cornerback is a lot of concerns. And then, oh. The DC is not Raheem Morris, and Raheem Morris has a track record of doing a great job, even when teams are not talented, like last year, of course. Chris Shula has been around the game for a while, but uh, he's never actually been a defensive corner in the NFL, so that's going to be the, the concern. So, again, Victor, I one day I really like the Rams, and one day I'm just very concerned for the LA Rams, like you know. But and, and obviously because I, I covered that 2022 season, I keep talking about it, and it, so. And we've seen Sean McVay have some rough years, maybe not to the extent of 2022, but, you know, I think 2019, they missed the playoffs. And so, yeah. you know, there are some de- years they missed the playoffs, but I think Sean McVay is one of the best coaches in the NFL where he could be a consistent winner and be consistently in the playoffs. I like the core group that they have last year. But going back to what Adam said, the defense, the defense is a mystery. You never know what injuries in the league. I know that quarterback rankings are not as good in the NFC, but I think there are a lot of very good teams in the NFC. I think even in the division, you might have said this, Victor. Like, yeah. just being around the Cardinals and the Seahawks, they might be some, you know, you know feisty uh, sleeper teams. And then obviously you got the 49ers, so it's not even easy in the division. Yeah, and I mean, part of the reason the Seahawks fired Pete Carroll was because Sean McVay and 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 Kyle Shanahan beat the brakes off of him and they he couldn't figure it out and they're like we you know the reason you're here is because you're a defensive guy and so they brought in one of the best ones that you know punched you know with the Baltimore Ravens who punched the, the 49ers in the mouth now you know we saw Sean McVay you know do a really good job in Baltimore there in that game that's one of the best games of the year that people talk about so maybe he has an answer for it but you know, the one of the things that people always forget, and we've had this conversation lately, Gilbert, is that people forget the turnover that every year happens with the NFL. You know, that's just the way it is. And people always look back, you know, remember what they last saw and think, okay, well, we saw these 14 teams make the playoffs. So those automatically, that means we're going to put them back in the playoffs. That's not how the NFL works. The NFL Every year is a new season, and so that's why I ask. I'm like, what is a reasonable, you know, season for you know, for, you know, um, kind of expectation for this Rams team? Because I'm with you. I, I I have a lot of concerns, you know, not just with the injuries, as you said. You know, he even Adam talked about. He said, you know, when he when when he he mentioned you in terms of, you know, the injuries. We saw we saw what happened two years ago. You know, and that's why, but it, it goes beyond that for me. The concern is with the secondary. And I know we had someone, we talked about it earlier in terms of they left the comments saying there's a lot more depth on, on this team. In certain positions there are, like we talked about with the offensive line, we talked about with the receivers. Yes, there's there's great depth there now. But defensively in that secondary, you know, I, I have my doubts there. And that's where I'm, I... Part of the problem with not seeing a lot of these players during the preseason is that we can't judge what's going to happen. I can, I, you know, I might, you know, throw a dart out there and say, yeah, like this team is going to be better than last season. 
but you can still end up nine and eight. Like you can still have more talent, Gilbert. Yeah. And it's just the way things break. Like one of the reasons I like this team a lot last season, and I told you right off the bat, was because how that schedule finished up and it and it and it and it went that way where you know once they got Kyron Williams, this team took off and they, you know, what they finished five and one in their last six games. You know, and and kind of, you know, we'll we'll preview this and we'll preview the season as we go forward. But that's my main concern with this team is, you know, um, as of you know right now, uh, that's that's where I'm at, and I'm glad Adam, you know, touched on a lot of those things, especially with special teams. I'm I'm you know I I feel much better about the special teams, and as he talked about, that was the first year with Shea Blackburn, and so. You know, you you like I said, I think all you really need from this team to be better, like this team made the playoffs. That's the other thing that I forget about. This team made the playoffs, Gilbert, having the eighth worst special teams crew yeah. in NFL history. If you can get this special teams uh, crew to be, you know, average, league average, imagine what that can do for this Rams team this season. Yeah, and uh, before I go back to the surprises of, of surprise teams of the NFL, you know, one thing I obviously I learned last year, and I feel like I'm always learning something about the NFL. And that's the beauty about the NFL; it's just there's something different. Like if you're caught up on last year's trend, you know, your your predictions are going to be terrible because there's always something new. But you know, one thing I, I realized, at least from last year, is you know, don't get caught up on slow starts and save the Rams defense sucks against the Detroit Lions in Detroit against a team that has a lot of con- a lot of consistency, a lot of uh, veteran players, a lot of talent, and they get lit up because we don't understand this defense just yet. Well, look at last year because, you know, they had a slow start and they figure it out. Again, don't fall into what last year was or the, or the old trends, but they are long seasons. That's something I got to keep reminding myself of for this team, especially a team that has some moving parts on defense. If they come out offensively and they're not good, then that's a concern because they should have more, uh, more be more familiar, more chemistry offensively. You know, you got Matt Lafleur back, Sean McVay is there, obviously. So the defense will maybe give them a little more leeway there. But you know, going back to the, the surprise teams in the NFL, and you know, I'll give you a little bit of, of a, a a preview of mine. My bracket will come out of SI probably the week that the, the week leading up to week one of the NFL, but. I looked up and I'm like, oh crap, I got seven new teams in the playoffs that didn't make it last year. And that felt like a lot. I think last year I got five. I always want to get five, but seven felt like way too much to me. But I, I, at the end of the day, I said, you just never know. Like I was very harsh on the Rams last year and they surprised me. And I go back to when I was in Denver last week and Sean Payton, it's going to be coach speak and it's going to be uh, being positive and making sure your players mm-hmm. believe in it. But he just kept saying, we're young and we're dangerous. And yeah. he kept he kept pointing to the Rams and the Packers. And he kept saying, yeah, you could be young, you could be dangerous. But if you don't have that quarterback, you might not be that dangerous team. So Matthew Stafford helped out a young roster. Jordan Love ascending so quickly helped out a young roster. Uh, Sean Payton is hoping Bo Nix could do that for his young roster. We still got Stroud. CJ Stroud. So if you have that quarterback... And your roster's a little suspect and up and down, a little young. And your coaching staff is young too. If you have that quarterback, you're always going to chance, going to have a chance. And the Rams have it with Matthew Stafford. So you know the Seahawks. I don't believe in Geno Smith, you know per se, and also a rookie head coach and Mike McDonald. But I like Mike McDonald's scheme in Seattle. Uh, but I go back to Arizona more in the NFC West because they have a Kyler Murray. I know people are up and down about, but he's had flashes of being a good good quarterback. And I, I like the Cardinals this year because I really like the OC and Drew Petzing and all their Brian and Barbara Harrison. Last year, Puka Nakua was a rookie guy. So always look out for those teams who have uh, an established quarterback with an emerging offense because at the end of the day, this league is all about scoring points and, and favoring the offense. So I just see that with Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams. But obviously, rookie quarterbacks are harder to figure out for every CJ Stroud, you get five packs in Lynch. So you just you just never yes. know. But to to you know to put a bonus conversation, it's like it just nothing's a given every year. But the good thing for the Rams, they do have Matthew Stafford. And they have Sean McVay. And I thought, you know, kind of continue on with this conversation, Gilbert. You know, you I, I think it was Fernando when you guys were talking to Eric D. Williams the other day, and you know, 
they were talking about quarters and I think Fernando talked about the fact that a lot of the the coaches who are former players you know they talk about you know looking at the season in terms of quarters you know you have the first quarter which is the first four games then you have the second quarter which is the next four games which is you know games uh five through eight and then you go nine through uh nine through whatever 14 and then you know on to you know the last five games there of the season and that's the last quarter there and i think that's a way, good way to looking at it because you know i think you know we'll we'll get into it when we preview the season for the for the rams in a couple and and right in you know when we do the preview against the lions because you you know you got to look at those first four games you got to get off to a good start you don't want to have the same situation where you're having to rely on other teams late in the season to get into the playoffs. And then, you know, by week 17, you've already clinched it. So I think it's really big for, like, as you talked about, with the defense kind of, hey, let's wait and see what happens with Chris Shula as he implements his, you know, we see more blitzing. Do we see how does this team kind of, how is it different? I know I've heard, you know, from some players, just, you know, reading some quotes from Adam, from Jordan, from, from uh, Gary, and they're talking about how much different it is in terms of it's it's a little bit more aggressive. I've heard guys like Kirk Morris and the Marco Farr talk about that they're expecting more blitzing from this team to be more aggressive than what we saw from Raheem Morris. So I think for that first quarter, that first those first four games, that's what I'm going to be looking for is how does Chris Shula change up his defense you know and then how does he go from there into the second third and fourth quarter of the season yeah and i know we're still early for the week one preview but all eyes are going to be on chris Shula's defense how he operates how how the young guys do i, I think we know what we're going to what, we, what to expect with the rams office maybe the mystery there is how do you utilize kyron williams and blake Corum? you know you know i'm sure you know scheme wise jonah jackson and steve avila is it's, it's going to be a little bit of a change, but for the most part, that offense is intact there, and we've seen it last year. So the defense is going to be the, the the biggest sign there. And and honestly, when Adam brought up the Seattle Seahawks last from in his interview from the Week One victory last year, uh, I'm pretty sure they won that game, but it was like a close game, yes. right? And it's really surprised everybody, like, oh crap! Like the Seahawks are supposed to be the better team because they made the playoffs a year ago. You yeah. don't want to be the Seahawks of 2023 when you were supposed to be the one making the playoffs after yeah. you made it. So things like that to look at, but when you have Detroit off the bat, it's going to be tough, but that was such a telling sign when they were feisty and competitive, like, oh, this team could definitely compete. So maybe if they come up short, but they're, they're they're hanging strong against Jared Goff and all his weapons there, that could be a telling sign too. You just never know. We always say, well, how did you look at the end of the year? But then the week one was such a big in the care, like, damn, Puka is going to be very good because he was very good that week one game. Yeah, and, you know, we, we talked about it when we previewed that, that game. I still remember, I mean, I think you were surprised that I picked the Rams and I was, I mean, I, I just had no, no faith in, 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 in Seattle, you know, especially when we talked about the same discussion mm -hmm. we're having right now, it was the same thing in terms of, look, people always forget the fact that with the turnover and what happens, the injuries with, with the Seahawks at the time, and then, you know, eventually, you know, it caught up to them and it wasn't, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I know that you're not a big, you're not a big fan of Geno Smith, but I, I don't, I still don't think he was a reason why they weren't as good or why they didn't meet expectations last season. I think, you know, the, that offensive line was pretty bad and yeah. it's hard to do anything, especially get the ball, but you know, though, you know, it'll be better defensively. You, I'll say that for sure. I liked what I saw from Mike McDonald. I did, I did take notice of that. Yeah, and then with the Cardinals, as you talked about, I think that's one of those teams that I'm also very high after you talked about it. But, you know, being there last season in training camp, I told you I really like how they approach things. They're really, um, you know, really structured. I like that structure uh, with Jonathan Gannon and their GM. And as you talked about, I, you made a great point in terms of the quarterback and the offensive coordinator. I think that is a huge thing to have. I heard uh, Rich Eisen, you know, I know we got to go pretty soon, but I heard uh, Rich Eisen saying that he loves having a head coach attached to his quarterback that is an offensive guy, kind of like what the Rams have with 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 uh, Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford. But at the same time, I'm like, 
I, I disagree with him a little bit. Just I'd rather have an offensive coordinator attached to the quarterback, a really good one, like we see with Ben Johnson and Jared Goff. And, you know, I, I think Dan Campbell is perfect for that, you know, team in terms of coaching. I think if you have a really good offensive coordinator, you can go a long way. And I think that's where my point goes with, with the Cardinals and why I think I, 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 I wouldn't sleep on the Cardinals this season. I know there's yeah. not a lot of expectations from a lot of the media members, but I'm glad at least you're seeing it because like I said, there's so much turnover every year and people forget about that. Defensively, I, I, I worry about them, but again, you know, Jonathan Gannon is not a rookie head coach like Mike McDonald. There's a lot going on your rookie head coach here. The Jonathan Gannon has the scheme, has the coaches there. Maybe some guys who are not cornerstone pieces just play their butt off. And, you know, they have Buddha, Buddha Baker. And that's uh, in terms of names that you know, that's about it. But they have some young guys that are emerging. So if the defense figures it out, uh, they'll be okay. But offensively, I think they're going to be very good there. But we do know that the Rams have had, you know, Arizona's number uh, for the last few years. But I'm just excited for the NFC NFC West because part of me did want to, you know, give the Seattle Seahawks a nudge there. And yeah, I'm not high on Geno Smith. I'm also I also have question marks about the offensive line. But they have so much talent defensively. They couldn't get on the same page. I think they will with Mike McDonald, even though he's a rookie head coach. And I do like that the OC that they brought in from the college game, you know, which I think is a good idea sometimes to bring these. Uh, innovative coaches so it's grub right grub. yeah grub uh yeah. i'm blanking on the first thing but yeah he was coaching in washington not too far obviously being in seattle but uh yeah maybe uh for the next show or, or the week uh we could break down the NFC west because they are very four intriguing teams in there